Today we're gonna block and paint this Chevy truck bedside, and I'm gonna share with you five key factors to remember when you're spraying metallic paint. So let's dig in and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is lay down a little guide coat on this so we can see what we're doing when we're blocking this panel out. So let's just put a light coat. This is just actually flat black paint. And you wanna use flat black if you're gonna use paint. You don't wanna use gloss black because gloss will gum up your paper, but flat black won't. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the soft block, flexible block uh, with some 320 grit sandpaper and we're gonna block this out. The guide coat will show us any high or low areas. First, I'm gonna do the top section down to this body line so we can keep that body line crisp and sharp. You wanna block in an X pattern. And as you can see, the texture's starting to show up where there's texture. We're gonna continue blocking this texture out. This may be a little bit of low spot, but it may block out. So until you break through the primer and hit metal or body filler, then you can continue blocking it to get it straight. Now, if you do hit metal or body filler, then you need to reprime it, check the metal, see if it's a high spot, and then reevaluate from there. Okay, as you can see, it's blocking out pretty nicely. There's a little bit of a low spot there. There, I think a little bit of primer will take care of that. But down here, you can see there's a little low, a little funky spot there. Let's see if that blocks out. Okay, so as you can see, that guide coat has went away and it actually feels really straight there. So we're not worried about that. But I wanted to mention something to you just because your guide coat disappears and it blocks out flat and you don't see any higher lows with your guide coat does not necessarily mean that panel is straight. You need to feel over it with your hand. Now, when I got done blocking this, the guide coat was gone and I could feel right here that there's a little wave right here, okay? I did a little bit more blocking, cross blocking on it, and it went away. So, yes, a guide coat is a tool to help you get the panel straight. It's not an absolute that if that guide coat comes out smoothly, doesn't show any higher low spots, that that panel is straight. You need to check it with your hand. You hold your hand flat across the panel, move it quickly is the best way, and you'll be able to feel any waves in that panel. Now we're gonna continue blocking this lip section right here. Now I'm pretty happy with how it's uh, straightening out. We have to uh, block down here in this low area and that was a little bit of a problem area. And then right here where I uh, actually bumped the primer and peeled some of the primer off and had to bury that in primer. Okay, everything turned out really good. There was a little high area here. It's got a little dip here. Primer's gonna take care of that. We're gonna prime it again and we'll block that area one more time. Um, down here is good, but we're gonna prime this entire area again just to get one final finish coat of primer on it. Now, over here, there's a little bit, a little bit bigger issue. I had to correct that body line just a little bit and it's created a low spot here a little high here so we need a thin coat of spot putty here so i'm going to use the spot putty it's just very minor it's a little bit more than what primer can take care of primer can take care of some waves and straightening it out but if you have a little bit of a low spot you need to put spot putty or glaze if it's real severe glaze if it's real severe bondo or body filler so we're going to put some spot putty in this block it straight, and then we'll prime this entire section one more time for our finished coat of primer. Okay, so rather than spot putty, I did decide to use just a little bit of icing. So I'm mixing it up here, just a real small amount. And 
And I really want this to be as smooth as possible. See, I'm kind of building up that body line just a little bit because it was a little bit low too. It's about to harden up, so. I'll sand, I'll block down to this line and smooth that edge out. But this is what I wanted to get straight. And that should take care of it along with a, another coat of primer. We'll be good to go. Now that this is dry, we're gonna go over it with the, with 180, just to get it straightened out. Then we'll go back over it with 320, remove those 180 grit scratches and we'll reprime this panel. Now I'm gonna run over it with some 320. Lock it just a little bit. Okay, it feels very good. Go around these edges just a little bit. Okay, now we wanna clean this bedside before we primer it, so we're gonna use some prep solvent. That's a wax and grease remover. Remove any contaminants. Now we're gonna mask it off for primer. I am folding my paper over to create a soft edge. Okay, so now we're gonna put our final coat of primer on there. I've got the 3M Performance Gun. We're using the 1.4 tip. We're just gonna put a good coat over the exposed body filler and then a thinner coat over the rest of it. So I'll put a, a few extra coats on the body filler because I wanna have some good material to block that out. The rest of it, we'll put a thin coat over it and then we'll just 600 grit over the primered areas to smooth everything out. I am using the Roberlo ME1. This is a 2K urethane primer that's a high build primer. It's going to be perfect for block sanding anything out, any imperfections, any waves. Be sure to check your technical data sheet on the dry time between coats. You want to make sure that flashes off good, allows those solvents to evaporate out a little bit before you put another coat on because that could cause solvent pops and a problem underneath your paint. I'm going to block out a few areas here and then we'll switch over to 600 grit on the orbital sander and machine sand all the primer smooth and get it prepped out for paint. Make sure you sand all those hard to reach areas. I'm going to use a gray scotch bright and go around this taillight area here and make sure I sand all those areas really well, knock the shine off so the clear will adhere properly. Because there was a lot of body work done and a lot of dust created, on this job, I'm gonna go ahead and wash it down with some soap and water. Make sure I get all that dust out of any hard to reach areas um, around the wheels, any, anywhere where the dust might hide. I wanna wash it down real good. I'm also gonna wash the floor down and then dry it with a towel. And then we'll blow it off with some compressed air to help the drying process and get it all ready to get masked off and painted. There were a few areas where I broke through the primer, so I'm gonna go ahead and spot those in with a little bit of primer, and then we'll scuff those just before we paint, do a light scuff on them. Then I'm gonna wash it down one more time. This will help uh, evaporate any moisture that's left on the panel and just get it clean and ready for paint. Now we're ready to mask off this truck, and the first thing I like to do are the edges or the jams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back tape this edge of this bedside. I'm gonna take a piece of three quarter inch tape. I'm gonna fold it in half where there's, so it exposes adhesive on one side and no adhesive on the other side. And I'm gonna lay that edge right along that body line. And that will allow clear coat to blow under there just a little bit so it doesn't create a hard edge of clear. Now they do make a tool that uh, folds it for you. And you could also use foam tape in here as well. I do have links to all the tools and products that I use on my storefront. The link is in the description. Okay, let's finish masking off this truck. And then I'm gonna give you some tips on spraying metallic silver and how to lay clear light glass, so stay tuned.
The first key to spray metallic paint is preparation. You want to make sure your panel is sanded properly and there's no coarse scratches in your repair before you start spraying the paint. Metallic paint should lay fine over 320 grit scratches. But just to be safe, I like to finish all my repairs with 600. I don't like to paint metallic finishes over 320. On occasion, metallics have been known to lay funny in those 320s grit scratches and create a bad looking paint. It's, it's gonna create modeling and a metallic that does not look right. My next tip is to use a sealer or wet bed. The reason I recommend this, if you do happen to leave a coarse grit scratch in your repair, a sealer is gonna help just a little bit to fill that scratch and help those metallics to lay flat. Same with a wet bed. What a wet bed does is it creates a good base for those metallics to lay flat in. What a wet bed is, is paint with no color or pigment. It's straight binder. You mix it up just like paint and you spray it just like paint. That is what I'm using on this repair. I'm using the 3M Performance Gun and I'm putting a wet bed over this repair. I have put it over the entire panel so then when I'm blending my metallics, the metallics will lay flat and uniform in, on that panel so the finish will look uniform and consistent. My next tip is, and I cannot emphasize this enough, is use the proper reducer for the temperature you're spraying in in your paint. In high metallic paint, it's very important that that paint has enough time to cure slowly. You don't want it drying too quickly. That will cause so many problems in your paint job. It'll cause sand piling, which is a rough paint surface. It can also cause modeling, which is an inconsistent look in your metallic finish. It's just very important and very easy to use the right reducer. Believe me, I understand materials are expensive and if you have a medium reducer and it's 100 degrees, you might be tempted to use that, but don't do it. It's not worth it. I'm gonna tell you right now, you will be sorry. Get the right temperature reducer for the, the temperature or environment you're spraying in. Another tip I can give you, and it's very easy to do, is Take the time and check your fan pattern before you start spraying high metallic finishes. If that fan pattern, if you have a particle of dust in your gun or something of that nature that's going to deform that fan pattern, or maybe you need to dial it back a little bit, you want to make sure that fan pattern is consistent all the way through. It's a nice, clean fan pattern, and I can sh do a video where I can show you a good fan pattern, but you don't want it to be heavy on the top or bottom. You want it to be uniform and consistent. And all you have to do is take your gun, spray it on a piece of paper on the wall, and make sure that fan pattern looks good. It's important when you're spraying metallics because you want them to come out of the gun in a uniform manner and lay on that panel in a consistent manner. If it's not, it could create modeling or imperfections in your metallic finish. My next tip in spraying metallic finishes is make sure you're overlapping 70% when you're making your passes. It's more important to overlap when you're spraying a metallic finish than when you're spraying a solid color or even a clear coat. This is gonna help you avoid inconsistent metallics or tiger stripes in your paint job. I hope you found all those tips helpful. If you did, leave me a comment down below and be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Now we're finishing up the paint on this panel and we'll get to clear coating. I've got some great tips for you on clear coating. I think I'm finishing up the blend here and I'm just blending out outside of the primer area. So when you're painting, you wanna make sure you get the primer covered and it's not transparent. You can't see any primer underneath your paint. And then after you cover your primer, you blend out into the rest of the panel to give that consistent metallic finish. Okay, now it's time for clear coat. I am using the 3M Performance Gun with the 1.2 tip. I have my volume turned three turns out and I am using 24 PSI on the pressure. My fan pattern is almost wide open. I have it dialed back just a bit. Your settings on your gun may be a little bit different to, depending on the conditions you're spraying in and the gun that you're using. This gun runs at a little bit lower air pressure than most guns. Most guns are about 28, 29 PSI for a conventional type gun. And this one runs at, I'm running it at 24. So it's quite a bit lower. Now, as far as the techniques for spraying, you wanna overlap, again, 70% on your passes. 
You want to be four to five inches away, somewhere in that area. It depends how you like to spray. I think it's important if you're just starting out to practice having a consistent distance from the panel at all times. Go around those contours at the same distance. This will help your clear coat lay down in a uniform way and give you a consistent clear coat finish. I'm putting on the second coat of clear now and you can see I'm slowing down just a little bit laying this clear on. I'm paying attention to how the clear coat's laying down. I'm using a light source to take a good look at that clear coat and make sure it's laying down flat and flowing out the way I want it to. If you would like more detailed instruction on how to lay clear, check out the video linked at the end. Share with me your project at garagenoise247 at gmail.com. There you can send me photos if you have any if you need any advice on a repair or if you have a question you can just leave them in the comments down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Garage Noise. Mm -hmm.